You know, sometimes we've just got to face facts. Selecting hair can be really difficult, and even though we'll see videos showing how to get amazing results really easily, it isn't gonna happen. Sometimes the best thing to do to get the best result possible is to cheat. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use the clone stamp tool in Photoshop to make it look as though we made a superb selection and cutout. So here's three ways to get a great result when all else fails. All right then, so for this first technique, this is the image we're gonna work on. If you want to follow along, if you go to the description part of the video, you can download it from in there as well. But so far, what I've done, I'm in the Select and Mask dialog, and you can see if I move the transparency slider for the view that I'm currently in, all up to 100, you can see this is as far as I've got. I've cut out the body, the hat, the sword, it's the hair that I now need to sort out. Let's just lower that transparency so we can just about start to see some of those hairs that we haven't picked up yet showing through. Now the ordinary kind of workflow for this at this stage would then to be come over to the left hand side of the screen, choose the refine edge brush tool and then just come in and brush over all these loose hairs here that we haven't picked up in the first pass whilst we're doing this cutout. And you can see that as we brush over, they get a little bit denser, which means that Photoshop is picking them up and including them as part of the selection. And it all looks pretty good so far. So that's how we are just there. Now, if I increase the transparency now of the view we've got all the way up to 100, we're gonna get a better view of actually what we've now got. And you can see that, yes, we've picked up these fine hairs, but the result doesn't look good. It looks crispy, there's lots of transparency, it doesn't look good. So let's now take this out of the Select and Mask into Photoshop and show how we can use the Clone Stamp tool to make it look better. So we'll come to the right hand side, right at the very bottom, we'll choose the Output to. we're gonna choose New Layer with a Layer Mask and click OK. So that now brings us back into Photoshop and what we can now do then in this case is we're gonna add a new layer to the top of the layer stack and I'm gonna call this one, we'll call it Hair Fix. What I then need to do is put my cursor in between the hair fix layer and the layer directly below, and then on Mac, hold down the Option key, and on Windows, hold down the Alt key. And when I do that, we get this clipping mask icon. I then click down, and you'll see this top layer move across with this little arrow. This basically means now, anything that appears on the hair fix layer will only be visible on the visible parts of the layer below. And the visible parts of the layer below are the actual cutout with all these kind of hairs that we haven't quite done a good job on just yet. But this is now how we can use the clone stamp tool on this hair fix layer. Let me just zoom in just a little bit. I'm gonna get my clone stamp tool from the tool while pressing S on the keyboard. In the options bar at the top of the screen, we'll make sure that the mode is normal, opacity and flow are 100. And where it says sample, we make sure that it says current and below. What we don't want is for it to say current because then what we'd be doing is trying to make a clone sample of nothing because there's nothing in that actual layer. We need it to sample from the contents below it. So that's what we'll choose current and below. And what I can then do is hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt key on Windows, click on any of the hair that we've already got to sample it and then use that sample to brush over and clone onto those hairs that we can't quite see yet and that don't look all that good. So if we can see now, I'm just doing quite a few different samples as I move down the head to kind of cover over all those bits just there. So you can see now, this is what we've got. If I turn it off and on, off and on. And if I just look at this clone stamp layer, this, if you just turn every other layer off, let's just make sure that we can see what we've got on it. That is basically what we've got. But by us having this as a clipping mask, it basically says the only visible parts on that hair fixed layer will be visible on the parts of the layer below, which is those flyaway hairs. So that's one way that we can use the clone stamp tool, but that might not work on your image. So let's now look at an alternative method. And if you're wondering why the guy's face is blurred out, it's a photograph I took of a British actor, and this just makes him unrecognisable so he can be used in this video. Now for those times that it is really difficult to make a selection of hair because it's on a dark background or a really busy background, what we could do is use a brush. So we could go to something like File, 
and search Adobe Stock. Then in Adobe Stock, just type in something like dark wavy hair on white or whatever is the kind of hair that you're looking for. When we do that, Adobe Stock then throws back lots of examples of wavy hair and all we need to do is find something similar to the hair that we're trying to make a selection of. Now, if we dive back over into my Photoshop, in my folder here, my cloud library, I've got a load of different images containing hair for this exact reason. Now, if I just double click to open this one up here, let's just double click on the hand tool to make it a good size. Well, I can now make a brush out of this side of the hair. So I would get my lasso tool, make a very loose selection of the hair going around the outside and then coming in. And we'll go to something like that. Now, the only area I want is the area within the selection. Everything else we don't need. So I will go to select and we'll choose inverse and then just fill all this other area here. If we go to the edit menu and fill, I'll fill that with white and click OK. Because the way we make a brush is that it will make a brush out of anything that is black or shades of grey. Let's just get rid of that selection, select and deselect. Now, if we zoom in, we can see that here, this area that was originally supposed to be a white background actually isn't pure white. So we need to make that white. We can do that by going to Image, Adjustments, choosing something like Levels, clicking on the white point here, click on that, bring it over and tap on top of this area. Anywhere underneath, the cursor will then be turned to white. So we can see that just there and this little bit down here. We also need to darken down the hair, make that more uh, darker, like a black. So I'll click on the black sample point and just click on the hair like so and click OK. Now we then go to the edit menu, choose uh, define brush preset, but you can see it's grayed out and that's because the dimensions of this document at the moment are bigger than what our brush can be. The maximum size on the longest edge for the brush is 5,000 pixels. This is currently 7,000 pixels. So I'll just get my crop tool and we'll just crop in. We might as well just get rid of all this stuff here that we don't need. So go for something like that. Then we'll go to edit and define brush preset. I'll just call this wavy hair and then click OK. And you can see now that I can actually use this hair as a brush like so. Now, the way I would use this brush, if I go back to my pirate image, what I'll now do is just add a new blank layer and I'll call this one hair. And then with the brush, I can resize it, make it bigger or smaller using those left and right square bracket keys. And I can also rotate it by using the left and right arrow keys on my keyboard. If I hold down the shift key, it'll make it move in bigger increments. But we'll go for something like that. Uh, round about there would be good. Now, I'm also going to hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt key on Windows to sample the color of the hair. So we'll click on that. That then adds that color into our foreground color in the toolbar. And then I will just position the brush and just press down. Now, obviously, at the moment, that's on top. It needs to go underneath this so it's showing through from the back. So I'll come to the Layers panel, click and drag and move it beneath the pirate himself. Now, if I zoom in, you can see that that's looking pretty good. And this, this kind of technique here works well on small areas because obviously on the real hair, we've got texture, we've got highlights. We don't have that on the brush itself. So you only really want to use this in very small areas. However, you could clone the texture and highlights from the original hair onto the brush hair, just like we did in the first technique. Now the chance in finding identical hair in style, colour and lighting is pretty slim, but we can work with it. Now this time what I've done is gone back to Adobe Stock and I've found this image that has a woman with very, very similar hair to our pirate, albeit the colour and the lighting is different. But I'm going to cut the hair out and add that onto our pirate. The way I'll do that is go to a channel pull. So I'm going to go to the channels tab and I need to see which of the channels has the most contrast between our subject's hair and the background. And it's definitely the blue channel. I'm not going to work directly on that, but I'll drag it down onto the new channel icon to create a copy. Then I'll get my lasso tool. And just like before, I'm now going to make a selection of the hair, a very loose selection just around the outsides. And we'll come in to say around about there. Then what we'll do is we don't need anything other than what's inside this selection. So we'll go to select and inverse, and then we'll go to edit, fill, and choose white from the contents menu and click OK. And we can now get rid of 
that active selection. Then what we need to do is make sure that the background is pure white. We can see over here that it isn't. So I'll go to the levels adjustment. So command or control L to bring that up and we can click on the white point, bring that over into the image and click down to make sure that it turns anywhere under the cursor into white. Let's just click a few more times around the image and then I'll also choose that black point and click on the hair as well. So we'll go for something like that. Alrighty, that's looking good. In fact, let's just make sure that's white over there as well. There we go. All right, okay, now that we've got that, when it comes to actually making selections, the area that is white is what is selected, the area that's black is not selected. And this is the opposite way around. So we need to invert this. So I'll go to the image menu, adjustments, and then invert. Now that we have it like this, I can then come to the bottom of the channels panel. And at the bottom here, we've got this little icon where we can turn the channel into a selection. I click on that and we see the marching ants. I then click back to go to the RGB to see the full color image, then the layers tab, and then I'll just hold down the command key on Mac, control key on Windows and press J. And now we can see straight away, here is the cutout of the hair. To use this, I'll just click on it, drag it into the pirate image. We'll then resize it, I'll go to edit and free transform. And we'll just bring the size of this down, something like that. Let's just drag it into place. Actually make that just a little bit smaller. Something like that will be good. And then obviously what we need to do is just drag it underneath. So, so far so good, but obviously we need to change the color of it. So this layer here, let's just rename this one to hair. And we'll go to image, adjustments and desaturate. We could then go to the uh, levels adjustment. So command on Mac, control on Windows and press L. Let's just make it a little bit darker, which is kind of blending it in, but we've obviously now got all these kind of white fringing going around it. But the way we can fix that is just like we did in the very first example. We're going to add a new blank layer. But the problem with this is because we're going to use the clone stamp tool, you'll remember from in the options bar in the sample area, it said current and below. And this is where we sampled the hair. However, if we look at this layer here, which we're going to call hair fix, it's actually underneath. It's only going to sample what is directly below. We need this layer to be directly above. So let's just click and drag it to the top of the layer stack. Then what we'll do is we'll use the clone stamp tool. We'll use that option key on Mac, alt key on Windows and click down to sample the hair and then be very loose just to sort of brush over the hair that we've just added in, just to cover over all those fringing bits. We'll do it on one side and we'll do it on the other. We don't need to worry about being accurate. We can be really loose with this because then we're going to add that clipping mask. But let's just bring this in just to cover over all the bits of hair. Last bit down here, like so. Once we've got it in this position, we'll just drag the hair fixed layer underneath the pirate. Then we put our cursor in between the hair fixed layer and the hair layer. Hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt key on Windows, and then click down to add in that layer, that clipping mask. And there you can see, there we go, before, after, before, and after. And in fact, if we put there, and in fact, if we put both of these hair layers now into a group and turn it off, you can see there we go, that's before and after. Now, if the color of the hair I'm trying to blend in is completely different from the color of the original hair, it doesn't really matter because once it's underneath, I can still just use the clone stamp tool to loosely cover it over with the original hair, like so. And obviously I would do both sides, but we'll just do on this bit here, I would then drag it underneath the original image and then just use that clipping mask. And you can see there that it not only changes the color, but it also adds in the highlights and the texture. Now, nobody likes a cheat, but hey, sometimes you've just got to because Photoshop, as good as it is, it does have its limitations. And what we've gone through in this video, it's just something that you can keep on the back burner for those times when the tools and techniques that you regularly use just don't give you the results that you want. But if you found this useful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button because that's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me. I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.